Hello friends, let's start with the CPT mercantile law. But before we start with mercantile law, two points about the law must be zipped in our mind. The two most important point before we start with mercantile law. And the very first point is what is law? That is the first thing. The law means the conduct. It is the rules and regulations to regulate the conduct of the people at large. Because if the conduct of the people is regulated, is governed, is good, is rational, then automatically we will have peace in the society. And when there is a peace in the society, we will have stability. And when we have stability, we will have growth. And when we have growth, we will have development in the society. And that is what is a very civilized society. So the conduct of the people must be regulated. To regulate that conduct of the people, we need a guardian, we need a parent called as law. That is the first thing. And the second important point about the law that must be very much clear in your mind is why should we be aware of the law? What is the need? Because of a maxim, ignore incia juris, non executa. This is a universal maxim, okay, applicable everywhere throughout the world. What does this Latin English maxim stands for? It stands for ignorance to the law is not an excuse. You do not know the law, that cannot be a good defense. You should be aware of the law. See this. A person is riding a bike without a license and when the cop catches him, he says, sorry, I didn't know that I must have a license. Will the cop allow him to go? Definitely no, because ignorance to the law is not an excuse. We are the elite masses, even the tribals living in the villages and all uh, those uh, forest area are aware of the law. They do not rob, they do not kill, they do not do any theft, decoity. Why? Because they know the law is going to punish them. So we should be aware of the law to which we are subjected to. Okay. So when we got these two points about the law zipped up in our mind, that is, what is law? Conduct. Should we be aware of the law? Yes, because of this maxim. Ignore in juris, non executa. Now we can proceed with our CPT mercantile law. Your CPT mercantile law comprises of three acts. The very first one is Indian Contract Act of 1872. The second act is the Sale of Goods Act 1930. And your third act is the Indian Partnership Act 1932. So this is your curriculum, your syllabi for your CPT mercantile law and with that let's start with our very first act our first module in fact indian contract act of 1872 okay and the very first question itself is what is a contract directly addressing the title of the act what is a contract now remember friends what is contract now contract is a destination to reach that destination we will have to climb three ladders only then we can reach that fourth flow, the destination that is contract. Our ladder number one is section 2B. That is what is promise. Our ladder number two is section 2E. What is an agreement? Now only when we climb ladder one and ladder two, that is what is promise, what is agreement, we can go to ladder three, that is section 2H, what is contract. So until and unless we climb this three ladder, we can't reach to the destination that is contract. So when anybody asks you what is contract, you don't have to say just section 2H because you will be climbing third floor without climbing the first and the second floor. So what is contract? You have to say 2B plus 2E plus 2H. That is first, second and third ladder to reach the contract. Okay, now we will have to see these ladders in detail. In fact, our first one, second one, third one, so that we can see what is contract. 
let us see with the letter number 1, section 2b that speaks about promise. Now in a day-to-day -day life, we come across n number of contract. Let me dilute this word for you all, transaction, okay. So in your day-to-day -day life, you come across n number of transaction, like you go and uh, buy biscuits, pen, you go to the McDonald, you go to the hotel, you uh, watch a movie, you go in a train, you travel in a train and all that kind of thing. Now for all this transaction, you want to buy a pen that has to be two persons, yourself and the shopkeeper. You want to go and see a movie that should be two parties, yourself and the theater. You want to travel in a train that should be two parties, that is yourself and the railways. So for every transaction, we require two parties to have a transaction between them. So we have two parties over here, Mr. A and Mr. B. Now Mr. A makes a proposal, makes a proposal. Hey, Mr. B, would you like to buy my car for rupees 1 lakh? So because he makes a proposal, so he is called as proposer. Okay, because he's making a proposal. He makes a proposal for Mr. B. So Mr. B is going to accept the proposal. So he says, yes, I'm ready to buy your car for rupees 1 lakh. So he is called as an proposee. So what is the promise? Section 2B. Promise means proposal and acceptance of proposal. That is accepted proposal. Okay. So the entire contract, your first ladder, your all the source, transactions, everything begins from a very important word. See, look over here. That is proposal, proposal, proposal. Wow. Admire the beauty, na? If there is a proposal, there has to be what? Acceptance of proposal. Wow. The person making a proposal is a proposer. And the person for whom the proposal is, is a proposee. Right? So this is the beginning. Proposal and acceptance of proposal. So what is the promise? The accepted proposal. The moment proposee says yes. If he says no, everything comes to an end. But if he says yes, then it becomes a promise. And automatically proposer becomes a promiser and proposee becomes a promisee. And they are the party to the contract. That is promiser, promisee, and that is a promise. That is your first letter. Proposal, acceptance, promise. That is promise, section 2B. Once we have cleared our first letter, we will go on to a second letter. That is your section 2E. What is an agreement? Now, agreement is nothing but the promise plus consideration. Now, see Mr. A. Again, you can see Mr. A, Mr. B. Okay? That is the promise between them. Okay? He will sell the car and he will buy the car for rupees 1 lakh. So, there is a promise, sir. There is a promise, C. Now, in the promise, is there a consideration for Mr. A? What is the consideration? What he will get? He will get 1 lakh rupees. What is the consideration for B? What B will get? He will get a car. So there is a consideration for both the party, Mr. A and Mr. B. So in the promise, when there is a consideration for each other, that is both the parties, then it becomes an agreement according to section 2E. So what is an ag hey, agreement? Means don't we have a conservative view? That agreement means a stamp paper and all that kind of thing that uh, our father keeps it in a cupboard and all that. No, that is an agreement. I'm not saying that's not an agreement, but that is not the only agreement. Okay, you go and buy an apple, there's a promise, there's an acceptance, that itself is an agreement. So it can be written or it can be oral. So now we have cleared a second letter. What is an agreement? Now we can go to a third letter. Our third letter is section 2H. What is contract? Because we have stepped first letter, we came to the second letter, now we are on the third letter, what is a contract? So contract is nothing but agreement plus enforceable by law. An agreement enforceable by law is a contract. Do we know agreement? Yes sir. Promise, in the promise there is a consideration, right? That is an agreement. Now that agreement must be enforceable by law. What do you mean by enforceable by law? Now, enforceable by law, of course, it should be a valid contract as per section 10. We'll see that later on. But enforceable by law means legal intention between 
the minds of both the parties, promise sir and promise see. That must be a legal intention. If I will fulfill the promise, you also have to fulfill the promise, else I'll drag you to the court. That legal. And when is that legal intention? When there is no love and affection. Because when there is a love and affection, there cannot be a legal intention. Remember that. Just take three possibilities. Suppose you go and buy a pen and you don't pay money. Uncle, please give me a pen. Huh? Please give. You have five rupees. Please give. Please give. Take and run away. Will uncle leave you? Definitely no. Second possibility, uncle takes the money and keep it in the box and doesn't give you the pen. Will you leave that uncle, that shopkeeper? No, because it's your money. But what if that uncle, that shopkeeper is your father? Oh, please give me the pen. Huh, you have a five rupees coin. Please, please, please give me. Take and run. Will your father get angry? Will he have a legal intention to sue you? He will be happy. <laughs> he ran. He will be happy. So when there is a love and affection, there cannot be a legal intention. Okay. So when there is a legal intention, simply, do you love the cab driver? No. So there is a legal intention. Do you love that uh, vendor who is selling an apple on the street? No. You say, I love you. No, no. So there is a legal intention. If you are taking the apple, you have to pay for that. And if he is giving the apple, so he will be asking for the money. Okay. <clears throat> so very important thing. Now this point is made clear in the following very, 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 very important historical case, a landmark case, Belfort versus Belfort. Let's see the facts of this case. Mr. and Mrs. Belfort were originally from England. They were the natives of England. Mr. Belfort was transferred to Ceylon as the director of the irrigation department in Ceylon. Now when they were on a leave, a good some uh, months of leave over there, they came back to their native place, both the couple, Mr. and Mrs. Belfort, that is to England. Now, when Mr. Belfort was about to resume the job back, Mrs. Belfort started suffering from severe arthritis pain. Mr. Belfort said that I will be sending 30 pounds for you every month. You stay in England only and take your care. Mrs. Belfort, she has tears in her eyes and she says, Oh God, thanks for giving such a caring husband. See? See the love and affection between the couple. Huh? Now what happened? Mr. Belfort sends nothing, not even a single pound. Now after few months, Mrs. Belfort files a suit against Mr. Belfort for breach of contract, for not sending that pounds, 30 pounds every month. So I want arrears plus interest on that. Now more than Mr. Belfort, Justice Warrington, honorable judge over in this case, was shocked. More than Mr. Belfort. The judge says at first place there is no contract. Hey Mrs. Belfort, did you thank God for such a caring and loving husband? Yeah. So when there is so much love and affection, can you have the legal intention that I will put him behind the bars and all that kind of thing? Definitely no. So it's not a contract, it's just a domestic arrangement between the husband and wife. So when there is love, there cannot be a legal intention. Sorry, it's an agreement, but it is not enforceable by law. Okay. Now, that is one robotic assignment for you at this point, okay? Uh, uh, that is your robotic puzzle and robotic quiz, okay? Let's see the robotic puzzle. Come on, you have to solve this puzzle. Come on, it's very easy. The robotic puzzle is, you will be excellent if you solve in 10 seconds, okay? You have to arrange this in a chronological order. You know the chronological order, ladder 1, proposal, acceptance, ladder 2, ladder 3, okay? So, your 10 seconds starts now. Start. Four, three, two, one, stop. So, what, what, which will be the sequence? What will, uh, so, the sequence is in this way. You have proposal, see here, proposal plus acceptance of proposal, promise. In the promise, there is a consideration, that's an agreement. Agreement enforceable by law is a contract. Okay. Now there is some quiz for you. Come on. Answer this quiz. Okay. Promise is defined by that section of the contract. The first ladder. Uh, 2B, 2E, 2H. So promise is defined by 2B. Okay. That's your first ladder. Promise is accepted proposal. Okay. Next one is your agreement under section 2E. Agreement. Uh, it includes what? 
what yeah b promise plus consideration for each other okay so that also we have seen okay next one agreement enforceable by law signifies what legal intention and when there is a legal intention when there is no love and affection so can i say both a and both b so can i say c is the correct answer definitely yeah c is the correct answer okay next is your contract signifies what proposal plus acceptance promise plus consideration agreement hey that puzzle kind of thing see so all the above correct or not correct okay finally we have leading case the milestone for the contract is come on which is the case we have done a leading historical case correct belfort versus belfort 